Islam started here in the Arabian Peninsula over 1400 years ago. Today, that's a population of 78 million people. That sounds like a lot of Muslims, but if we go seven and a half thousand kilometers across the Indian Ocean to this tiny little archipelago called Indonesia, the Muslim population is far greater than just 78 million people. It's actually more than double that. In fact, right now, Indonesia has a Muslim population of over 200 million Muslims. To put that into perspective, that's larger than Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, Syria, Jordan, Iraq, and Egypt combined. Right now, the island of Indonesia holds the largest population of Muslims, more than any other country in the world. So, how did this happen? How does Indonesia have so many Muslims? And more importantly, how did these remote islands right above Australia, almost 8,000 kilometers away from Arabia, receive the message of Islam and then embrace it with open arms? Well, let's find out. One thing to keep in mind is that historians and archeologists have no agreed upon explanation for the spread of Islam in Indonesia and the rest of Southeast Asia. So there was never one reason for the conversion of Indonesia to Islam. Okay, now we've got that out of the way. Let me tell you something interesting. The Muslims never conquered Indonesia it actually happened much differently. And it didn't just happen overnight. And historically speaking, it happened only recently. The first piece of evidence that marks the earliest existence of Islam in Indonesia is this tombstone right here on this island called Sumatra. This is a 13th century tombstone of a local ruler called Sultan Malik al Saleh. Malik had adopted an Arabic name and the Arabic title of Sultan when he and his population decided to embrace Islam. Here's what's amazing about this tombstone. It's designed with patterns that are typical to this Indian state, all the way over here called Gujarat. So how did this Indonesian tombstone become somehow linked with this Indian state over here? Well, the Muslims of Gujarat were known to be these risk-taking traders who would go on these far and incredibly dangerous expeditions. They formed these trade routes, which were also used as a means of spreading Islam to far regions around the world, like Indonesia. And so the whole Muslim world now had access to Indonesia and trade relationships formed. This brought migration from various Muslim countries. But it wasn't just trade that brought Islam to Indonesia. Like for instance, there was this guy, Zheng He, a Muslim Chinese admiral who sailed with these massive fleet of gigantic mega ships. During the 15th century, he would go on these epic voyages all across the Indian Ocean to form diplomatic ties and trade partnerships with other countries. He would take nearly 30,000 men on his 317 ships to more than 35 countries, visiting China and all of its treasures to the world. His story is actually quite amazing, but that's a story for another time. Anyway, as Zheng He traveled with his football stadium-sized fleet, he would make a series of stops across the world like Sumatra and Java in Indonesia. And so he made a huge impression on the native Indonesians and is often credited for spreading Islam in Indonesia. Okay, so Islam spread to Indonesia, but how's that different to any other country? Trade can only do so much to help spread Islam. It still doesn't explain why Indonesia has the highest number of Muslims. This is where good old economics comes in. The Indonesians lived on these tiny remote islands that weren't really good for cultivating food and produce. And so they paid tribute to their Hindu and Buddhist neighbors on the mainland for precious goods like rice. But the Indonesians didn't want to pay the Hindu and Buddhist rulers anymore. And so they looked to their Muslim friends in the Middle East and Africa in order to form solid political ties with Muslims, they began to embrace Islam. And why not? The natives enjoyed access to a huge Muslim trading network. This gave the Muslim allies trading opportunities and a unique prestigious position within the region. And so island after island, king after king, the Indonesians embraced Islam by the droves. The conversion rate was insane as mosques were being erected and the Adhan was being called all across the islands. So did the Indonesians embrace Islam to enjoy all these wonderful perks and benefits? Well, no, not really. Indonesia didn't just passively embrace a new religion for materialistic reasons. Instead, they opened their arms to Islam and let its teachings influence their culture, language, food, and even martial arts. This is why Indonesia has the most amount of Muslims than any other country in the world, because they found something beautiful in the message of Islam and were honored by it. The story of Indonesia proves that Islam doesn't need to spread through conquering, but by having good character and showing good treatment. 
This is why there are over 200 million Muslims living there today. May Allah bless the people of Indonesia. Amen. If you enjoyed this video, along with all the other content that One Path Network produces, please support us so we can create more beneficial content for the world. Go to onepathnetwork.com and you can support us from as little as $1 a day. Jazakumullah khair for your support.